Hi, my name is Barry Crampton. Today I'm going to show you around our Ford Focus, then I'll take you for riding it, but first I'll tell you a little bit more about it. It's a 1 litre T EcoBoost Titanium. 2017 on a 67 plate, has done 22,695 miles. Fuel economy, urban 49.6 miles per gallon. Extra urban, 68.9 miles per gallon. And combined is 60.1 miles per gallon. Has a top speed of 120 miles per hour out of a three cylinder engine. <laughs> now, I'm not gonna walk around today and uh, you're probably thinking, well, why not? It's a lovely day. I've seen you walk around when it's lashing down outside. But there's, a, there's an absolute plague of midges outside. There's millions of them. It's awful. So uh, I'll, I'll try and remember what's on the outside. It has the chrome Ford grill the black chin spoiler, front fog lamps with the, the chrome insets, multi-spoke alloy wheels, continental tyres all round from what I can see. The chrome separator separates the windows from the, the body, integrated rear tailgate spoiler, reversing sensors, plenty of room in the back seat, it's like new inside. Rear centre armrest, it's got rear child seat isofix anchor points, a really nice bright car okay so service history 20th of the 9th 2018 at 9890 miles um, that's auto world high walton 21st of the 11th 2019 at 16851 miles auto world high walton 9th of the 9th 2020 20242 miles auto world high walton Okay, so here we go. We've got the two Ford keys. It's keyless start. So as long as you've got the key on you, um, the car's gonna start. Sorry, extremely busy this morning. Um, messages flying in and out all over the place. Six speed box. It's only a one litre engine. So I'm gonna take you a little bit through the country and also uh, up the motorway because no doubt you'll be wanting to know what it's like on the motorway turn that down it's got here we go the, the the best thing really probably best invention would be better if it was bluetooth but this plugs in and as soon as we plug that in like so Apple CarPlay should start. Inserted USB device is not responding. So we'll try again. Great demonstration, Buzz. Ah, there's a beep there. Let's see. There you go. Unit only gives guidance, safe, lawful, okay. So that's it, Apple CarPlay. As I say, you have to plug it in for this, but there is an adapter that you can get these days. I think it's about 130 pounds, which basically just plugs in and then you can, you can get the Apple CarPlay working as soon as you get in the car by uh, Bluetooth. So as I say, uh, Sadly, it's a beautiful day, but there are clouds and clouds of midges up here. Um, it's, it's, it's awful. I couldn't get out of the car. It was that bad. Anyway, Ford Focus. Beautiful cars. Lovely to drive. Fantastic gearbox. Great suspension. Nice and comfortable. Got everything in that you could possibly need or want. One of the best accessories, heated front screen. Um, it's it, absolutely great cars. But uh, probably about 20 years ago, there was a saying called or, or Mondeo Man, Ford Mondeo Man. And, and really speaking, it was Mondeo and Focus, I would think. Um, I had a Focus back in the day as a, a company car when I decided I'd had enough of the motor trade and went to work for somebody else and realised 
that the motor trade wasn't that bad after all. But I did miles in that car, um, and, it, and it's absolutely everything you, you could you could want. And the reason people stopped buying Mondeos, it went from Mondeo man to BMW man. And the, the reason was that BMWs had a, a better residual value. Uh, they cost more, but they had a better residual value. So uh, all in all, you could get them on contracts higher, that, that sort of stuff, for, for a reasonably small payment a month. So reps hoping to uh, get one over the Joneses for the for the their allowance they could actually they could get a BMW and, and have the BMW badge instead of a Ford uh, unfortunately it, it backfired on uh, quite a lot of them and one, one of them being a friend of mine who I, I was working for Mercedes-Benz at the time and he, he had a certain monthly allowance and Mercedes-Benz SLKs had just come out and they were actually worth more second-hand than they were brand new because there was a premium on them. And I got him a, an all-singing, all-dancing Mercedes-Benz SLK for the, for the same price as he could have got a Rover or something at the time. Um, <laughs> which was fine until he got his tax bill because, of course, you have to pay tax on benefit in kind and the value of the car was was enormous. I think it was about fifty grand or something, and uh, where he was normally would be paying benefit and kind on twenty thousand. So his tax bill was was enormous. So he wasn't too pleased with me, but he did have a a, a nice car. And, and now I think, what would I rather have? Would I rather drive in a BMW, drive round in a BMW, or have more money in my wage packet and I, I, I can't believe I'd rather drive this than a BMW I don't like BMWs I don't like the way they drive I don't like the stupid run flat tires on them and I don't like the design on them most of you will and we do sell a lot of BMWs so <laughs> please keep coming and buying them but I, honestly I would rather drive I would rather jump in this and drive this than, than I would a BMW. I prefer the design, I prefer the stuff it's got, and I, I'd, I'd rather drive this in the winter, especially just for the heated front screen. Nice and smooth, the suspension's great, the gearbox is absolutely second to none. It's hard to believe it's a one litre on the motorway, but just on things like this, this is where you can, you can actually tell going uphill you you know you, you've got to use your gears a little bit more and change up and down a little bit more but one litre three cylinder and, and on the motorway it, it goes as fast as you can possibly need so anyway I, I, I'm surprised that BMW cells don't go down now I suppose the, the reason why there were BMW uh, the, the sales swap from Mondeo man to BMWs is Mercedes has always been perceived as a, an older man's car so uh, people would rather go for a BMW and, and kid themselves that they're young and that they like really hard suspension so In this day and age now, especially working from home, what's the point of having a BMW sat on your drive, paying all that tax? You're better off with a cheaper car. You're better off with one that's easier. You see, the other thing is, the BMWs, the servicing costs and the repair costs were paid by the company. So the driver wouldn't notice it. I wouldn't care, but when you're actually paying for it yourself, rather than have it, uh, you, the company paying, then Fords, the parts are cheap, they don't go wrong that often, and when they do, they're fairly cheap to repair. And, you know, you say, well, oh, BMWs are, are reliable. Well, well, they're no more reliable than any other car. I don't think they're any more reliable than a Ford, and I do know, because we recondition them, 
there's more to repair, the parts cost more. When you go to deal with people in a BMW showroom, and I've worked in a BMW showroom, and I can assure you we weren't like that, but whenever I go in a BMW showroom, they look at me like a, a, it, I'm something they've just scraped off the shoe. And when you try, well, I, I used to buy cars from a, a BMW dealership, and I rang him one day, and uh, oh, he says, I, I, I can't be bothered with traders. Yeah, okay. The, the traders that keep your business going. But, uh, but that's it. Having said that, I work for Ford. <laughs> and after, after about two hours, I decided I didn't want to work for them anymore, so. I guess I guess that's a, a conflicted story. But although I didn't want, want to work for the people at Ford, the cars, they are really good. You know, as I say, this, this gearbox, and it's the same on all Fords, and always has been the same on all Fords. And, and, Nobody else can just seem to get it right, or as right as Ford. It's, it's just, it's slick. There you go. It's just beautiful. The handling on Fords. I suppose the uh, rally pedigree has helped them over the years. And if you drive something like a, a Ford ST, they are superb. I suppose everything, if they put the mind to it, they can do anything. That has proved with the Ford GT beating Ferrari. This, uh, this car makes me want to drive too fast as well. It just handles so good. Right, the car. So it's a five door. Plenty of room, I've got plenty of room here. It's a manual six speed. Height and reach adjustable steering wheel. Multi-function steering wheel. Your phone controls on the right hand side. And your, let's say, just clear that to say it's low on petrol. And also your, uh, there you go, your trip computer. If I knock it over to the side information, settings. So you can knock the stop start off in the uh, settings, which is brilliant, because I there's lots of cars I get in, and you just have to keep knocking off every time you get in, and I hate it. Another thing I'd like to see is being able to knock the radio off um, on some cars. You, you jump in the car and the radio comes on straight away. I don't want it to come on. So, Fords are really, really well thought out. They're quite simple. I think they had a bit of a glitch with the sat nav. Some, somebody had a brainstorm uh, when they were doing the sat nav a couple of years ago and, and made it ultra complicated. But this with Apple CarPlay, that's all you need. You know, as long as your phone plugs in these days, you don't need all these things on the dash. And, how many miles per gallon you're doing, how, how far you, you know, a trip counter and stuff. You just need your speedo, you need your, perhaps a rev counter, you don't even need a rev counter really, but it is nice. Um, fuel gauge, coolant temperature gauge. I'd like to see an oil pressure gauge in all cars because that's the, the first sign that anything goes wrong. Um, 
is basically oil pressure. And your speedo. Got cruise control here. Cruise control, again, not overly complicated, but in my opinion, one switch too many. You have to click cruise on and then click set, like so. So, I suppose some people will think, well, you could accidentally click cruise control and knock it on straight away, fair enough. But you could accidentally open the door and fall out. So, there you go. So, we've got, you can use the Apple CarPlay, that mirrors your phone, mm -hmm. as you can see there. You've got, and you can use Siri as well. Um, Hey Siri, navigate to PR5 4EA. Getting directions to Preston PR5 4GB. I don't know why it does that. <laughs> to me, it doesn't sound like I'm saying GB, but every time I use Siri and say AE, it thinks I've said GB, so uh, that's perhaps my accent. So that, that's it, you, you know, you don't have to take your hands off the steering wheel with, with Apple CarPlay. Go on, Squizzer, get in there. Get off the road. And then all I have to do is click go. Starting route to PR5, 4GB. In one mile, turn left onto Long Lane. Hey Siri, cancel navigation. Okay, it's stopped now. You know, it, it is so easy to, to work. Um, you can use your music, uh, your iTunes, through Apple CarPlay. But if not, if it's not plugged in, then you've still got Bluetooth hands-free. Oh, you've also got uh, hands-free calling as well. Um, but if not, and it's not plugged in, then you've also got the Ford system, which is it's pretty good too. Let's just knock that. There you go. So that's audible. That's listening to uh, books. Um, you've got WhatsApp. You can send WhatsApp messages. You can ask it to read your text back or read your text when they come in. All good. But then if I unplug this USB, that goes back to the Ford system. And as I said before, everything Ford do is all good. Um, always great designs, really. There you go, you've got, that's just the audio. If we click source, we can then put it on Bluetooth. Yes, put it on Bluetooth like so. The Temptations. Let's say we'll just flick forward. Oh, we would flip forward if I'd click the right button, like so. Angie Stone. Nice display. Don't know who that is. Taylor Swift. So as I say, easy to use. Come on, Eileen, how's that gone? <laughs> oh, Simple Minds. Might have to... Got a lot in common with her. Let's just uh, turn it up a little bit. So, the, the audio system's great as well. As I, as I say, the um, gentleman, sir, why these days 
working from home, why would you have a car paid for by the company? You'd be far better off not getting taxed, having your own car, having something smaller that you can afford and not worry about keeping up with the Joneses, something that will do everything like this, reasonable to service and uh, reasonable to insure. So I, I'm sure we'll see Mondeo Man reappear. Mondeo man, who's getting more money in his wage packet and not taxed as much in benefiting kind. And still got everything and plus a few bits that a BM hasn't got. You know, it, it really, really makes me sad when uh, when I think about the way the British car industry used to be and how it should be and hopefully uh, how it will be again. Everything, uh, or all the news I watch because I don't watch the BBC, all says how good the country's doing. Everybody's investing. This morning there's more jobs, more vacancies for, for people since uh, pre-pandemic we've got technically we've got Fords and Vauxhalls Range Rover, Jaguar, Land Rover then we've got other you know the Morgan factories, Lotus such fantastic cars Why buy a foreign car? One litre. And I, I used one of these. Gosh, this chap is asking for trouble, sadly. Very sadly. I just... Uh, the speed people drive around here. Ah, that's okay. I was worried, but they've got it. They've got it all in hand. There's the uh, roundabout collision button. If, you, uh, if you've if you not knocked it off in the settings and you want to knock it off here, got a 12 volt plug there. And again, Ford Design. Ford Design, right. That's my cup. Normally, in most cars, you put it in the cup holder and it's there. Now that means that I then struggle to change gear or I'm changing gear like this but in Ford actually has a little compartment under here and you can move the compartment you can open and shut the compartment well it would do if I could there you go so I can shut that compartment so if you don't drink as much coffee as me and you've got a smaller cup then it, it's still reachable but here so we'll put that there and that there. And also these two little things to make sure your cup's secure. Just movable. It, it does. It makes quite a good sound as well, the three cylinder. I suppose it's, uh, it's half a six cylinder. And I, I use one of these going to Manchester every day for probably six months or one litre. And, and although certainly no problem for me on the motorway, and you'd think you were in at least a 1.6 in this, this vehicle, 
The only thing I would say that if you're going to be buying one to be doing 70 mile an hour down the motorway all the time, then I, I don't think the fuel economy, um, you'd, you'd probably be better off with a diesel. But if you're buying one of these for, you know, commuting around town and so on, and the odd motorway trip, then the one litre's fine. Nice and quiet, no tyre noise to speak of. As I say, it's just great. It's a lovely driver's car. Now, I'm just going to take you up the motorway for a, a short while and then uh, when I get back to the garage I'll show you how to pay your mobile, how to delete a mobile, how to uh, stream audio and how to set the sat-nav. All really easy. I love driving these. Uh, he's uh, got a poppy on the front of the car, so I'll let them off. Right, let's uh, get going. We're in a bit of a. I should have perhaps given them some time to get in front, but look at the steering on this. No understeer, no oversteer, one input, straight round the bend. Should I? No. If I was in an ST, I'd do it, but I'm not going to in this. It's a shame, really, because I, I like going around this roundabout. As you can see, that's that's your input. And we're just... No further input, no move. And we're just round the, round the bend. And li listen to the engine now. Let's uh, just wait till he moves. Here we go. Now that, that's actually too fast. And we're in fourth. It was fine in fourth. I'm going to tuck in here. Set the cruise. So click on, click set. And then we'll just get to 70. So that's it, doing 70, two and a half thousand revs, in sixth gear. Pretty quiet, pretty smooth. I suppose a lot depends on the tyres um, you have fitted.
this is a smooth section of the motorway so you, you absolutely nothing through the steering wheel as, as such uh, no no harsh vibrations just a nice car so oh front center armrest in there uh, we've got power socket USB and auxiliary in just where we're coming off the motorway in a short while where I was videoing before nice country lane but there it's it's a country park you know it, it, and the sheep and uh, cattle well not cattle you don't you don't get many cows on the road do you but anyway so this this sheep wandering about on the on the road and it's dangerous to go fast really um, but there's a nice little stretch of country lane which I use to test the steering on vehicles just make sure everything's all right um, you know no kind of movement in the top mounts or the uh, the ball joints no cracking from the steering or uh, springs or anything like that just just by shifting the weight from one side to another quickly backwards and forwards um, so I'm gonna do that I'm pretty sure there, there won't be anything wrong with the car, but it, it will show you how well this vehicle handles and how quickly it changes direction if you need it to. The aircon is icy cold as well. My, my feet are like blocks of ice. Of course, all I needed to do was just knock it off there, but that was too easy. I'd rather get frostbite. Nice, thick steering wheel, good feel to it, and everything just just to hand. Again, Ford design. You can see your indicators there. They flicked up like well, wing mirrors on a, a, a motorbike, um, or mirrors on a, a motorbike. So they're just above your quarters to three position. So you can you can see everything there. Um, rear wash wipe on the, the wiper switch here it's very very well designed everything easy to use easy to hand As I was saying before, cup down there, elbow on armrest, and great for gearbox. We'll stay in second there, technically. And basically, you shouldn't set off in second. Just take you up this country lane now and then cut this piece of video back into the other video. Oh, look at that beautiful car! Well, on my side of the road, it's kind of cut me demonstration up, but. So oh, here we go. Look, you can see a lorry coming.
absolutely lovely great handling again thanks for watching see you in the next video